Como News presents. I went skydiving. Skydiving instructor saves student when epileptic seizure strikes mid freefall. He will be fucking peaking right now. A professional British stuntman who memorably parachuted into the 2012 London Olympics opening ceremony under a Union Jack died in a wingsuit skydiving accident in the Swiss Alps near the town of Martigny on Wednesday. According to British press reports, 41-year-old Mark Sutton was taking part in a three-day event in the Swiss Alps near the French border. Sutton made his jump, reportedly from a helicopter, around 11 a.m. from a height of 10,800 feet. He and other jumpers were being filmed for the event. Local media said he intended to land near the village of Le Petit, but something went horribly wrong and Sutton hit a ridge. He died instantly. Police said they did not yet know what caused the accident. A beloved skydiving instructor tragically fell to his death during a jump in Lumberton, Mississippi. 56-year-old instructor James Jimmy Horak Jr. was tandem diving with student David Meek, who was on his last day of vacation. Witnesses say there appeared to be something wrong when Horak deployed the main chute, and the men seemed to be tangled in the lines. A later investigation showed Horak cut away the main parachute and tried to use the backup, but there may have been a malfunction. The two men fell 15,000 feet into a swamp area about a mile from the airport in Lumberton. Meek's friend said it was about six hours later before they found the two men still tethered together. Horak was killed while Meek suffered injuries to his back, face, and arm. Federal Aviation Administration officials will look into whether the parachutes were properly rigged and whether the operation met regulations. Horak's wife Debbie says her husband was a very safety-conscious instructor who had been on more than 8,000 jumps in his lifetime. Extreme sports athlete and MTV star killed in freak skydiving accident. A group of four experienced parachuters were performing a skydiving routine Monday morning when an accident left MTV star Eric Ronier dead. Eric Ronier and three other skydivers were the opening act for a charity golf tournament in Squaw Valley, California on Monday. A witness says two parachuters jumped first and landed safely. Ronier was the third to jump, but hit a tree at a high speed 25 to 30 feet above the ground while landing. He died on impact. Ronier's parachute was caught in the tree, and it was reportedly 40 minutes before rescuers could retrieve his body. Emergency personnel pronounced him dead at the scene. He was 39. He is survived by his wife Anika and their two children. 
Korean actress killed in parachuting accident. South Korean model and actress Jong In Ah has died in a fatal parachuting accident, according to Korean news reports. The 38-year-old actress went skydiving on June 13 in Gohyeong County in the southern part of South Korea. Police believe Jong's parachute deployed properly and that she died due to an improper landing. Jong's body was discovered on June 16, tangled with her parachute, floating in the sea near a breakwater. She had been learning to skydive for about a year now in preparation for an upcoming movie. Jong's funeral is scheduled to take place on June 19. This is Ben Kornick. He's a skydiver with more than a thousand jumps to his credit. Ben's from Wales originally, but has been working as a skydiving instructor with Skydive Fiji in Fiji for a couple of months. On Tuesday, he went for a non-work dive and then this happened. Apparently, there was a problem with the steering toggle and the massively gay Ben collided with the top of a parked van at nearly 40 miles per hour. But he didn't die. He did, however, break his leg in three places, shatter his elbow, break his arm, and according to his Facebook donation page, also broke his hip. He was in such rough shape, they had to bandage him to his friend to support the limb. The doctors in Fiji weren't equipped to give Ben the treatment he needed, and they worried he would lose his leg to infection. He needed to get to New Zealand for surgery, but he didn't have the money because he wasn't insured for non-work jumps. So Ben's cousin took to the internet for help. He set up this Facebook page and asked people to donate. So far, they've collected $50,000 and Ben did make it to Auckland. The 31-year-old is now undergoing treatment to recover and will hopefully soon reunite with his family, including his massively cute one-year-old son, Alfie. Mackenzie Wethington was more than excited to celebrate her 16th birthday late last week by traveling to Oklahoma to go skydiving for the first time. The Joshua, Texas native jumped out of the skydiving plane after her father and was shocked to discover her primary parachute wouldn't open sending her plummeting thousands of feet downward before she hit the ground. And while Tony Stark was unavailable to save her, Mackenzie apparently has someone else watching over her. The miracle child managed to survive the 3,500-foot fall and is currently in hospital with broken bones and internal injuries, but very happily alive. Now that is what I call a super sweet 16. Tandem jumpers killed in skydiving accident. A morning skydive turned fatal after malfunctioning equipment led to the deaths of two men. An 18-year-old boy was being accompanied by family when he went skydiving at the Lodi Parachute Center on Saturday. It was the teen's first time, and he jumped in tandem with an instructor from 13,000 feet. Disaster struck in midair. The parachute would not release, sending the pair plummeting to the ground. Both men died. Their bodies were later found in a vineyard near the landing zone. Despite the deadly accident, the center remained open the rest of the day as other skydivers went through with their jumps. Skydiver's double shoot failure almost causes him to shoot his pants. Here's something that's bad, falling. To be more specific, falling out of the sky. While most people agree falling out of the sky is bad, some people disagree and think it's good. Those people, including the one who shot this video in late January over Paris, California, call it skydiving to make it sound more like a sport and less like a pants-shittingly stupid catastrophe. This guy would argue that skydiving is distinct from falling because he has not one but two parachutes. Unfortunately, neither of them worked on this occasion, so I'm sorry this is still a case of old-fashioned falling out of the sky. People usually remain on the ground by default, but this guy made the mistake of paying a pilot to take him to the sky, and now he's falling out of it as a consequence. Fortunately, while he might suck at the falling out of the sky part, he's really good at the hitting the ground part. Most people hit the ground with a splat, but he merely goes oof and sustains only minor injuries. So the lesson here is, don't fall out of the sky. But if you do, go oof, not splat. Skydiver cheats death, husband arrested for attempted murder. On Easter Sunday, 39-year-old Victoria Sillier was skydiving at Netheravon Airfield in Wiltshire, England. 
the experienced skydiver's parachute malfunctioned, and she survived an astounding 4,000-foot drop. She had recently separated from her husband, 35-year-old Emil Cillier, who was arrested and accused of attempted murder. On the day of the incident, Cillier wasn't using her own parachute, but one that her husband had borrowed from a nearby army store the day before. A police investigation has shown that parts of the parachute called slinks, or soft links, that attached the canopy to the harness were missing. Authorities are on the hunt for the missing slinks, and Emil Cillier has been released on bail pending further investigation. Victoria Cillier suffered serious injuries and only survived after using her expert training to slow the fall from 100 to 30 miles per hour by the time she hit the ground. Two skydivers were killed and a third suffered injuries when an afternoon of record attempts went horribly wrong in the skies over Arizona on Tuesday, December 3. Initial reports say the two jumpers were killed after a mid-air collision which caused their parachute canopies to become entangled and unable to slow their descent, sending them plummeting toward the ground. The accident occurred near the Skydive Arizona School in Eloy, 65 miles south of Phoenix. It advertises itself as the largest skydiving center in the world. The jumpers, reportedly using Skydive Arizona, set off sometime before 5 p.m. The jump reportedly began normally at first, with three people performing a team maneuver before deploying their chutes. Witnesses said two of the jumpers then collided mid-air, causing their chutes to fail. It's estimated they were 200 to 300 feet from the ground at the time of the accident. The exact cause of the tragedy is still under investigation. Officials said the deceased were part of an international group of jumpers who had converged on Arizona to take part in a series of world record attempts. Eloy police have not yet made public either the nationalities or the names of the two people involved, though it is believed neither were US citizens. The third jumper suffered only minor injuries from an unrelated mishap. Two skydivers die after crashing into Massachusetts' garage. Two skydivers died on Sunday after they crashed into a house garage in Massachusetts. The incident happened at around 5.20 p.m. as a skydiving instructor and a student took part in a tandem skydive. A tandem skydive is when one skydiver is attached via a harness to a specially trained and licensed professional skydiver. The pair was supposed to land in a designated landing area at the Cape Cod airfield, but went off course and crashed into a nearby garage. They were both declared dead at the hospital. An investigation is ongoing to determine the cause of the accident. In a spectacular display of aerobatics, watch 49-year-old skydiver John Frost get all tangled up in the wing of a Cessna light aircraft piloted by 87-year-old Sharon Tremblay, before both plummet toward the ground. Watch out! Ooh, that must have hurt. And touchdown. Thankfully, both Frost and Trembley survived. Talk about close calls. Watch where you're landing next time, okay? Pilot who flies skydivers forced to skydive for the first time after plane emergency. How do you feel about skydiving? A yes? A no? Well, skydiving pilot Sean Ken Martin wasn't opposed to the idea, he just never tried it. But his date with the sky was coming, whether he liked it or not. Over the weekend, pilot Ken Martin of Missouri heard a loud sound after one of his skydivers jumped. After a second pilot flew up to assess the damage, Ken Martin was told the Cessna's tail was hopelessly bent and a landing would be impossible. Deciding he had no choice, Ken Martin steered his plane in the direction of crop fields and prepared to bail. After steadying the plane, Sean jumped out with just 2,000 feet between him and the ground, he told the media. Pulling the cord and the parachute he was already wearing, Kid Martin watched as his plane slammed into a field. No one was injured. Asked if he's ever going to skydive again, Kid Martin laughed and said sure, but perhaps as a tandem jump and from a bit higher up next time. Eight skydivers killed in plane crash in Finland. Eight skydivers died on Sunday after the light aircraft they were traveling in crashed during a skydiving trip in Finland. 11 people were on board the Comp Air 8 plane. The aircraft was traveling at a relatively high altitude of more than 10,000 feet. Eyewitnesses reported seeing objects or aircraft parts falling from the plane before it started losing altitude, while the BBC reported engine problems. Three people, the pilot among them, managed to jump out of the plane with parachutes before the plane crashed, surviving with only minor injuries. The plane caught fire after impact near the town of Yamiyar Yavi. 
According to an investigator, the crash is the most serious flight accident in decades in Finland. 